We get a lot of questions often of how does it actually work when you move between countries? How do you go through border control? I haven't been out in the seas in a long time. <laughs> We got oh, kicked out of the immigration okay. office. Drugs on board, eggs, criminals. <laughs> I'm Ben, that's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization. See you later. Oh, come on. Come on. Twenty eight countries later and over twenty five thousand nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. Alright, so we're just getting ready to leave. We're heading to the Philippines and we're in Palau right now. Beautiful Palau. But uh, it's time to check out. We're gonna check out with customs and immigration and Department of Transport. There's three agencies here, so it's a lot of paperwork. So we'll give you a little overview of how that actually works today and then we'll link some documentation down below. When you leave a country, you have to go back to customs immigration to check out of the country. They stamp the exit on your passport and then the customs usually gives you a clearance form and that means you can leave the country and go into the next country. I think what it really means is that you haven't incurred any weird debts or done anything illegal in the current country so that you basically are leaving a clean wake to go to the next. These are really important out here. Most countries require you to have this from the previous country you visited, otherwise they will send you on your way. So we are now officially checked out even though we're sitting in the bar. It's gonna take us about three hours to actually motor out of here to get offshore outside of the reefs. Let's talk about this puppy. This, this is a binder we carry to all of our customs and check-ins and it contains some papers, some really important papers. So what do we got, Ash? Passports. Pretty standard equipment. I'm a Canadian and Ben's a German and it turns out that most of the countries we visit we don't need a pre-approved visa. And you have to do research before you arrive in the country to make sure you don't need a visa. Next, boat shine. International boat registration and every boat has this so basically it just says the details of your boat including the tonnage, the net tonnage, the gross tonnage, the length. This little number over here, your registration number, that's really important. Passports and boat papers. Those are the papers that you need to provide for customs and immigration. Anyways, in the Philippines, what happens is it actually takes about a few days to get towards a port where there's an immigration office. So we're gonna put up our yellow flag, it's called a quarantine flag, and we're gonna pull into the first island we see and catch some sleep. And then it'll take us a couple more days to actually get into where there's an office. All right, we're off. When we came here, we'd been like sailing across like lots of places for a long time. It's time for us to go. Time to go offshore before the sun sets because after the sun sets, you don't want to be sailing your reefs. The pass is actually right behind you. You can't see it. Bye, Palau. Bye, everyone. We'll miss you guys. We'll miss you guys a lot. But we'll be there in three to five days and we're going to try and time our arrival to be with the daylight. One other thing that's kind of interesting is if you look behind me, we're exiting a pass directly into the sun. I'm all like black, right? So is the water. So we actually probably couldn't do this without our Obitel maps, without our satellite imagery. And it's totally revolutionized what we can and cannot do sailing and how we exit these things. I mean, this pass is marked. There's a mark there. Uh, the marks on the other side are sort of small buoys that you can barely see. This is us going out the pass. We're not actually turning right. All right, we're out. We're sailing. Wanna move my feet. Wanna drop my one. Wanna move my feet. Wanna drop my one. Wanna move my feet. Already a fish on. I really want a mahi. I really, really want a mahi. I put it in my freezer. What are you doing? Send the hook? We don't, we're not ready for this at all. That's gonna pull them in the cockpit. It's gonna go right in the cockpit. Right into the cockpit? Yeah. Lunch, lunch, lunch. I just, I was making one. Making boring yogurt. Yogurt and fruit, man. Come on, Mahi, cut it out, dude. You need We're back, back in action. You really gonna pull him in the cockpit? Yeah, man. Yeah! 
<laughs> Look at this beauty. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, yeah, we got lunch and dinner. Okay, let's get the lure back out. Let's do another one. I saw it strike and I started to play with the lure. And then it bit again. I was like, I think I got that fish, but I burned my finger. I got a rope burn. You gotta wear gloves pulling that sucker in. So we're doing about eight to 10 knots right now, and the fishing rod would not work right now because we're going way too fast. So we've got the hand line out, the 300 pound test, and we're just making lunch, making dinner. I have been wanting a mahi for so long. I am so excited. It makes good everything, good sushi, Good sashimi, good, good tacos, good, good, good cooking. It's just freaking amazing. He's not the hugest we've caught by a long shot, but he's a good size. He's good for lunch, dinner. They require an advance notice of an arrival, an ANA. Often they want you to print that out and have a copy of that as well. The Philippines, there was no ANA, but some, a lot of, most countries do now, I think. And usually, this is usually via email, and you send this out uh, usually 48 hours minimum before you arrive, stating your boat, the color, the size, the crew, the names of the crew, and when you plan to arrive and uh, where. And they want that bad, and if you don't do that, you can actually get either fined or turned away. It's been two nights, so day three of passage to the Philippines. And this is my first video diary, and I have no idea what to say. It's kind of funny. And so we were meant to start this on the first day, but we were actually pretty miserable the first couple of days of passage. I'm one of those people who likes to play by the rules, and, and when we go to check in, I don't mind in some countries sort of, you know, cruising a bit before you check in, especially if there is no area to check in. And we've done it several times. We did it in Papua New Guinea. We've done it in Panama and the San Blas Islands. Uh, in French Polynesia, we went to Fatu Hiva before we checked in and Hiva Oa. Uh, yeah, there's been a number of times where we've sort of cruised en route to check in. And this will be one of those times. We've been doing averaging really pretty good speeds and we have 220 miles to go. We're gonna st stop at Sulu and Island, which is on the edge, like the outermost eastern part, and it's a tiny little island. We'll sleep for the night, we'll get a good sleep. But then we're going to Cebu to check in, and I don't really wanna go to Cebu City, so we're gonna try and head to Port Carmen. And Port Carmen isn't really in Cebu, so it's kinda north of Cebu. And I'm gonna email them and let them know that's what we're doing, but I'm a little bit nervous they're gonna be like, no you must go here or be like no you are in big trouble that is very bad and you must pay apparently this is one of those places where you might end up paying a little tiny bit more to check in their current plan is that we got oh, kicked out of the immigration okay. office Typically what you do is you do quarantine first, then you do immigration, and then you do customs. So there's three things usually. Here in the Philippines, it's kind of unclear what you do, so they told us we do have to do quarantine. So we're off to quarantine office now. It should be all good. We'll do our quarantine, we'll go back to immigration, then we have to find customs. And customs is uh, notoriously a little bit finicky here in Cebu City. So it should be interesting. We're halfway across the city now doing quarantine in some weird spot. The free pratique, this means that we are cleared to be inside the country. And what will happen is that this means we can bring our yellow flag down. It's our quarantine release. So it means that we are both healthy and that we haven't brought anything into the country that is contaminated. Back at immigration, we're gonna nail it this time. The health department was under construction and the immigration's in a mall and the customs is in a port. We're done with immigration, we're stamped, our passport stamped, we can move on to customs. So we're in the port, this is the port of Cebu, and it's our third stop and our last stop to clear customs. So looking forward to checking these guys out and saying hi. We've heard that there's bribes here. Maybe, we'll see. I think of it as expedited service. 
good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, very nice office. Yeah. Very small. It's nice though. <laughs> yeah, we're on a private yacht. And we oh, just, really? Oh, we I, just, will, I, will, I will provide you one. All questions by all the customs agents start with, what is your problem? No problem, sir. I'm just checking in. I don't know, maybe maybe this isn't normal. Maybe. I don't think they're used to private yachts. Um, we're having to explain that we're checking in and moving on to the next port tomorrow which is not normal so we'll see what happens most especially you have to declare do you have drugs on board or narcotics no. give you a paper sir yeah sure. you have to enumerate the nil list most especially the arms and ammunition regulated drugs beside it the right nil stowaways <laughs> no stowaways fans the animals criminals <laughs> No, 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 CNN. no, 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 we are not CNN. We told them we were famous YouTubers no, and so they checked out our channel on YouTube. We're watching your movie. Oh, yeah. We're watching you watching our movie. We're just having a blast checking in. The two handsome and lovely. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Sailing Nahua. Wow. That was one of the most fun experiences. We are in the country, cleared officially customs quarantine immigration. We just had so much fun checking in and this guy's I handed think... us our card, his card to help us out any way he can in the Philippines and we didn't pay anything to check into this country. And, and we had a hell of a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the Philippines, it's awesome. All right, we made it to the Philippines. Yeah, and they let us in the country, which usually happens. But let's do a quick recap of all the things we went over and some things that we kind of missed when we were filming. Where do we do our research? So most of our research comes from a site called Noonsight. Uh, it's the biggest resource for sailors and for cruisers who are sailing long term. We'll put a link below. And it's really where we go first to get our information. And then second, we look at the compendiums put together by Soggy Paws. They do just a fantastic job. Hats off to them. When you arrive in a port, who do you need to visit for first? Uh, usually you have to do the research, but usually what happens is you put up your yellow flag, your quarantine flag, and you don't get off the boat unless you've been told it's okay. And then quarantine will come on the boat, they will look for plants, seeds, uh, diseases, yeah. those kind of things. Usually it's just they want a bit of money that's predetermined by the government and then then you're able to go to shore and sometimes customs comes to you sometimes you have to go to customs and hunt them down and immigration same thing the other thing i think i want to mention is sometimes you get an agent an agent is basically just someone that acts on your behalf sometimes they're really valuable to have such as the galapagos because there's just so much paperwork colombia we needed an agent because they went, we couldn't go into port with that one yeah, like the offices sometimes are in some back alley up three three stories and, in the and port or... it's you, you just need an agent and that agent will run around for you and do all your paperwork. I think it was $300 in Colombia. It's a lot. In Galapagos it was probably $500 or something crazy. It, it kind of comes to the point, it's a privilege to visit these countries. That's how we see it. It's a privilege to come to the Philippines. It's a privilege to go to Palau and the Galapagos. So, you know, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank, totally. Huge thanks for having us. And we absolutely don't mind the paperwork that goes involved. Sometimes the officials apologize when there's a huge thick stack like, like Fiji had crazy paperwork. And it doesn't matter, right? Like we're just like, oh, whatever. We're here. Today's yeah. the day for customs, immigration and quarantine and we'll fill out whatever you want. Here, I got 16 copies of our passports and things all ready for you. The, the only other thing that we haven't mentioned is is the nil list. So this nil list we made up uh, in the Philippines here. They, they actually wrote it out and made it up. Usually it comes as a package that they give to you that you have to fill out. But a nil list is just declaring that you have no arms and ammunition, you don't have any drugs, you don't have any illegal things. Illegal things. You just have to write nil, nil, nil. Or if no, there's a no, no. checkbox, just do all the no's. <laughs> we do not have firearms and we do not have drugs on board. Full stop. We do have alcohol, so sometimes we have to declare it. I don't think we've ever paid duty on it. As long as things are opened and they, it doesn't look like you're gonna try and sell it while you're in the country, then they'll let you bring it in. Yeah, their concern is that you sell it to locals and make a profit. But check this out, this nil list, they wanted us to put stowaways as nil. It's pretty <laughs> funny. Yeah, we didn't bring any illegal immigrants into the country. So that was good. One more thing, as the captain, you are responsible for your crew. So if crew is flying in, they have to provide immigration a place of where they're staying. And 
for us, that's our bow, right? So me as the captain, I have to provide a crew letter. A crew letter basically just means I'm responsible, I'm liable for this crew member, and they're staying on my boat, and here's the registration number of the boat, here's the location of the boat, and here's our itinerary. We'll link a crew letter down below, um, but yeah, that's basically all it means is this crew member has a place to stay, and they will be leaving the country. Okay guys, so we're in the Philippines. We're in El Nido of all places. It's gorgeous here. Look at this place. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, yes, we had a day of running around to the different offices. We had some major paperwork to do, but it's worth it and I'd do it all over again. Is there any other tips that you would kind of give? Yeah, take it easy with customs and immigration. Don't get antsy. Don't get upset, just go with the flow. Make sure you have the right paperwork, you answer them in concise answers, and you put a smile on your face. Always because smile. It, it isn't a big deal, even if it takes two or three days. You're just gonna get into the country. <laughs> they have no reason to stop you from coming in, and once you're in, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. We hope that helped you guys with your future travels, and if you have any comments or questions, hit us up down below, and we'll try and get to as many as we can. See you next week.